The Bali Nine drug smugglers Andrew Chan and Muran Sukumaran have launched their final appeals against their death sentences. The two men were convicted in 2006 of being the ringleaders of a plot to smuggle almost nine kilograms of heroin into Australia. Speaking in Indonesian, they pleaded with the judges in Denpasar District Court to spare them from the firing squad. Welcome to the first episode of The Live Issue, a panel discussing the most important of issues. Now, with 10 years coming up on the Bali 9 and the executions drawing closer by the day, now would be a good time to discuss this. And I'm joined today on, to the, on this panel by journalism student Ellie Minot, communications student Matt Kravetsky, journalism student Sally Karacic, and journalism student Jake Bull. Now, before we get started and discuss the points that we have today, we're going to take a look at a breakdown of the timeline, thanks to studio member Brittany Evan Gould. April 17, 2005, nine Australians were arrested on their way out of Bali, Indonesia. And on February 14, 2006, Maran Sukumaran is found guilty and sentenced to death. The next day, Andrew Chen receives the same charge. Both men were alleged to be the ringleaders of the Bali Nine. Under Indonesian law, the use, production, possession and trafficking of psychotropic drugs is punishable by death. Under the former president of Indonesia, the other seven members of the Bali Nine won their appeals and had their death sentences reduced to either a 20-year term or a life sentence. On April 26, 2006, the High Court upholds the death penalty, both Chan and Sukumaran. Their following pleas were also rejected in 2010. They were also denied clemency in late 2011 and early 2012. In February 2015, both Chan and Sukumaran were transported to Nusa, Nusa Kumbangan, a remote island off Java, where executions are held. The issue has sparked controversial debate among both Australian and Indonesian nations about the ethics and moral standards surrounding capital punishment, as well as an emerging tension between Australian and Indonesian governments, with political appeals by the Australian government for clemency being denied by the Indonesian president. This case will be the first execution enacted by the Indonesian government upon Australian citizens if the decree is to be maintained. Off at the beginning. Thanks for that, Brittany. Now, before we get to the, my fantastic panel, we're going to take a look at the thoughts of the university students at the University of Wollongong and what they think of the Bali Nine. Well, I think capital punishment shouldn't be a thing. I think it should be completely gotten rid of. Drugs for a life is a little bit... Um, not okay. <laughs> I think we all make mistakes um, in life. I mean, in a way, I can see why overseas they think that they should do that because, I mean, like, giving drugs to people does kill people. I think capital punishment as a thing itself is wrong. I don't agree with them being on death row because I think if you murder someone, then, yeah, you deserve to... I don't know. They deserve a second chance, I think. They've really reformed. The capital punishment doesn't really apply in the modern age sometimes. You know, we need um, better forms of punishment, especially nowadays, 21st century, you know. Now we've got those opinions, we'll, I'll go to our panel. Now I'll start with Ellie. What's your opinions on the domestic portrayal by the media of the Bali Nine, especially the two men on death row? I think that the media plays a significant role in formulating the public opinion, but with that being said, are they being selective with what they're telling us? We don't know that. The majority of the public doesn't know that a Filipino woman was actually up for t capital punishment as well for the same crime, though that's not being covered in the media. So it's really a question of are they being selective so they can formulate up opinion in a certain way so that we're all united on the same forefront to beg, basically, for their lives. So. Do you think that's a positive thing, Matt, bringing all these Australians together, sort of pushing an opinion one way but bringing everyone together to support Australians, is that a good thing? To an extent, I think. Uh, bring, the media, with their, obviously our source of media is Australian media coming directly from Indonesia, but with uh, the media bringing the Australians out, I think it's good to an extent. See, the media has also put a lot of blame on the Australian Federal Police with uh, the dobbing them in to uh, Bali with the information. I think it's a bit hard to put that all on the Australian Federal Police because the AFP are doing their job. They had their their job to do and they've given information over and they, I think they said once they didn't actually 
know this, or no one could have predicted this was going to happen. So I think it's good. It brings us together that we all want to support to get rid of capital punishment, to, but then it also brings the negative aspect of joining together to blame the AFP. Fair point. Sally, so what, is it fair to put so much relevance on Australian lives when, like Ellie said, we weren't putting any attention to the other p members of death row? I think because it's such a, we have such a close relation to Indonesia, um, the fact that we are put, we are, the media is portraying so much sympathy for the two men on death row, I think that's just going to be a given. I think we need to realise that it's not so much the fairness, it's the fact that it's probably happening in other countries as well. As Ellie has said, there are other people in different countries that are on death row at the moment, and I'm sure that their media are probably portraying exactly the same as what we are. We want sympathy for these men because we want to bring them back home so we can you know, make a judgement for them with our laws, not within the Indonesian laws. Right, and Jake, I'm going to take this from a different point of view. Some people are claiming that the Tony Abbott government is using this issue and the media to sort of create a smokescreen and distract them from their own problems. Because if everyone's thinking about this and not thinking about the government. What is, what's your thoughts on that? Um, well, it's definitely a ploy that I think they have used. Um, you know, the making them look good and, and showing face and the fact that, you know, they're promoting and trying to help and get these people home um, shows that, they, you know, that they're, a, they're a good government and hopefully with elections coming up they, they want people to, to vote them in. So, I mean, that's part of their job, that's what they're, they're there to do. Um, but also back on the fact that, you know, with the media betrayal, um, you know, the media is a business, they have to make money and they make money by, you know, putting in stories that Australians are going to want to read. Um, so by saying that Australians and, and putting them in, in the, the media spotlight is definitely good for them. So I think on that point with what Jake's talking about is that when you are discussing about the media, they have that that's how they make their money. It's their job. Yep. And I think in order, the media try to provoke emotion and you want emotion and you want to provoke that stuff out of your audience. So in order for, for, like, in order for the audience to get provoked about something and to get behind a passion, then um, we create sympathy for these for the men over in death row. But the Australian Federal Police are being targeted and saying that they are solely accountable. Why weren't they arrested on Australian soil? Because they were on their way home. But I think the media is directing the whole issue towards the AFP and the fact they were caught, regardless of the fact they have committed a crime. And this is a consequence of that crime. And the AFP being portrayed by the Australian media as the sole, you know, people, why this is occurring, it's just not mandated. So I'll pose one last question to the group. Anyone feel free to jump in here. With the media portraying these Australian citizens as men that should be spared, are they portraying them in too favourable of a light considering that they're bringing in drugs into our country? Well, I'll point at you, Matt. Yeah, well, I, I believe so that uh, for the whole situation of Australia against capital punishment, I think that's what they're trying to bring in as like a heroes to say, not heroes, obviously not heroes for everything they've done, but they were, they were doing a crime, they're criminals, uh, to an ex that's what they were, so, but I think Australia's sort of overlooking that because they were sentenced to death, and, but that's the law of Indonesia, so they should have probably been aware of that. I think also because of the time lapse as well. So this happened almost 10 years ago. So in that time we need to be looking at, and I think the Australian government are looking at what could have been done in that 10, ten years. They, they've they've come out and said they've been rehabilitated, there needs to be all these other alternatives to just pointing the finger and saying, OK, you're going to die because you've done this crime. It's like time has gone past. It, this didn't, this um, incident um, didn't just happen yesterday. Um, so we need to look at what the men have been through in those prisons and what they have learned over time instead of just... And I think that's why the government are pleading for them to be brought back home. And, and that's something that the Australian media is really harping on, is, is the, the rehabilitation, the fact that you know, these guys have changed their lives around, that they are helping other people in jail to, to, to not touch drugs. And um, has people come out that have been in jail with them saying that they haven't even touched drugs, drugs. they've been offered it you know, various times throughout you know, their, their stay and they, haven't, they didn't want anything I to do I think they have every right to do that to to like to um, let like share that information with us um, about their rehabilitation. So Ellie, there's lots of rehabilitations on Australian soil, but with no death penalty. Is the gravity of the death penalty what makes these rehabilitations so important, or do you think the media is just trying to spin a good story? I think that the Indonesian government is using this case as a precedent for like future cases. So yes, there's been a significant. You know, suggestion that these men have been re rehabilitated, some have become artists and within their own cells and in jail they're having a, you know, good influence on fellow cellmates. 
However, I don't think that, you know, I'm not in favour of capital punishment, but I think that, you know, these men knowingly did commit a crime that's enshrined in Indonesian law, and this is the consequence of that action. Thanks for that. We'll end that first point, and we'll move on to our second point, international relations. But before we start that, we'll go back to the opinions of the students of the University of Wollongong and see what they think. If anything, this might just be the final, you know, the final, the last straw. But it's not, I don't think the relationship's that strong at the moment anyway. So I just feel like it's just going to add to that and not so much be a huge, you know, factor in the falling of their relationship. I think it will affect um, relationship in terms of um, travel and stuff like that. I know a lot of people are like, I won't go to Bali now and things like that. Um, I think in terms of other relationships where like trading and things like that, there will be, um, you know, some hesitations, but in the end, we're such an inter like um, Australia is really dependent on all these other countries that are really close to them in Southeast Asia, and so we can't cut off ties completely. That's that's too important to let something like this get in the way. Thanks, really Sansa. well. Thanks for that. Now we, we, I'll go to you first, Ellie. What's your thoughts on the impact between Australia and Indonesia of the Bali Nine? Well, I think currently the you know relationship between the two there's obviously tension, and I think that if this was event to arise, then there will be a greater divide created between the two nations. It's obviously important in forms of tourism, trade, and just international affairs that you know situations like this shouldn't have to arise. Though I feel that you know within the issue of state sovereignty, those men are on Indonesian soil, and they can choose basically whatever lead they want to pursue. I'll go to you Sally. Yeah. If this execution goes through, which all likelihood it will, what do you think the implications will be between Australia and Indonesia? Well that's what's really interesting um, personally to me is to see just how the Australian public will react. I mean where the media have hyped this event up so much that it's just well, what do we actually think is going to happen when it's when it's when these if these two men are actually executed, they're no longer with us, um, and the fact that you know, do we say that Australia, the Australian government has failed, has failed the Australian public, has failed these men, their families? Um, I think that's what's going to be really interesting is to see just how much, um, just how, just the reaction that it sparks. Um, so it's, the aftermath is just going to be really interesting to but see. The, it's going to be devastating as well. Mm, the Indonesian public, though, is played a foremost, like, extremely strong impact on the Indonesian government. The Indonesian public are actually pushing for these executions they're to just hurry up. And yeah, they're pressuring the government, just like the Australian public are pressuring our government to get them home already. Mm. Indonesian public are doing the exact same thing, but they're wanting the executions to hurry up. And we've seen on, um, on Twitter the hashtag boycott Bali, mm. where a lot of Australians are turning around and saying, well, we're no longer going to put our money towards a holiday in Bali. Um, Indonesia already get a lot of tourists from Australia. There are heaps of Australian businesses that are set up over there and that rely on the profit um, and the tourism and the fact that these, um, a lot of the Indonesian locals are turning around and saying, well, fine, you go. Like they've actually backlashed on Twitter as well mm. and said, fine, boycott Bali, we don't want you here anyway. So I think it's just, it just shows the restraint and the, intens the intensity of this, um, of this event. So it is going to be really interesting to see what happens after it if the executions go through. They've definitely unified in that sense because it's another hashtag that's um, I will stand for mercy. Yeah. So they're supporting the fact that you know they should be granted clemency as well. So it's definitely appealing to the whole definitely Australian divided, public. Definitely divided, yeah. So Jake, with the tensions between Australia and Indonesia, Tony Abbott has claimed that the aid we've given in the past should sort of bias the Australian lives. What's your thought? And Indonesia has responded quite harshly to that. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, Indonesia, like we've said, have just said, well, you know, we, we don't want your aid. I mean, um, international relations is definitely something that, that needs to, to be strong. I mean, um, if, conflict if conflict arises, um, then we Australia would need, you know, help. I mean, we've helped other people in the past. Um, so I think, you know, one event is, is definitely, you know, hard to, to, to stop the whole international relations between two countries, but it does look like it could be getting to that point. So, Matt, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I agree with Jake over here with saying that uh, we will need them. Event If there's any conflict, we're going to need Indonesia. They look such a big ally to Australia at the moment. But with Tony Abbott already coming out and saying if the executions go ahead, the relationship's going to be harmed. And then, obviously, with Indonesia already rallying against uh, for the, uh, the executions that happened already, and there's already a clear tension divide between the two. And 
well, on that point with Indonesia rallying, I think it was uh, really interesting with the hypocrisy of Indonesia in the sense of execution that they're so strict and so pushing forward for these two Australians to get executed that they kind of forget that they're obviously, they're also trying to get clemency for their own people in other countries such as Saudi Arabia and other countries throughout the Middle East. So I thought that point was really interesting. As what's your comments on that, Ellie? Yeah, the Indonesian government is more or less, like Matt said, it's very hypocritical. I think that you cannot be asking for clemency in other countries if you're denying it to people that have obviously shown re rehabilitation for the crimes that they've committed and are making a positive influence. And that you cannot create the distinction and cultural divide within certain nations because that's the case. Like, you know, they have just pardoned a man's sentence for murder, so now they're granting clemency to people that have committed murder, but not those that are trafficking drugs. So I think it's contradictory, hypocritical, and it's just immoral, really. So Sally, do you think it's fair for Indonesia to not want to give in to Australia because they don't want to be shown as being pushed around, considering the tensions that have arisen through immigration issues in the past and Australia giving aid, they don't want to look like they're following Australia's lead. Do you think that's fair on their part or do you think it's a bit immature because lives are at cost? Well, I, as you just asked that question, I kind of just had a flashback back to in um, year 11 and 12 when I was doing society and culture and we had this discussion about um, Indonesia and their drug laws and how no matter what, no matter what countries um, no matter how uh, me what what any, what any media um, company portrays Indonesia to be, they still stand against it and they stand with their own policy that no, this is our policy, this is what we're going to do, this is how it's going to be. We don't care how much you you know trash talk our country on it because we we believe in it and we're going to stand strong against it, like strong with it. Um, that that that's their law, and I think that um, you know I think it's sad for these two men that it's happened and that they've. But at the end of the day, they did. They've they've incriminate like they've criminalised themselves by doing this. I think out of all the countries to do this in, you know, they've done it in one that they've known um, that would that would possibly uh, had a high risk of imp of um, imposing the death penalty on them. And this follow up followed straight after pretty much of Chappelle Corby. I mean, this is you know right. I think it was twelve months afterwards. So I mean, they knew what was going to happen. You know, I mean, I guess they they take the risk because the yeah. the reward of the payoff. And I think that's what Indonesia mm. were trying to make a trying to make a, an example out of is that well we've granted Chappelle Corby her clemency. Yeah. Why well, would anyone try and do this again yeah. after what Chappelle has been through? So there was a political backlash from like reducing her sentence and people now view the Indonesian government as weak. So there's a strong pressure on the president now yeah. to yeah. follow through. And that's not only in like an international sphere, but locally as well. That's why the Indonesian public is giving him so much pressure in protests and rallies because they are now seeing him as weak. And being a new president as well, he does need to assert himself and I suppose he might be choosing this way. And I think, it, yeah, especially with the new presidency, I think it's he's trying to appeal more to people in his own country and I don't really think he cares about what other people in other no. countries are going to think of him anyway. As long as he's doing his job and what is expected from um, from him by his own people, he's not going to give a damn about. Well, it's the same no. with um, Tony Australia. Abbott. We've just said that, you know, he's doing this to, to help himself and to help the, the government. I mean, obviously he would care. But you know, this is still a, an elect. Or, you know, still he's still the prime minister. You know, he still needs votes, and, and you know that's the way mm. to, to get votes. I guess it comes down to a case of import domestic politics is more important than international politics. Is that something the panel would agree with? Yeah, I'd have to say so. With uh, obviously domestic, you want to keep in charge of your country, which is what he's doing. And uh, the Indonesian prime president is very reluctant to give clemency to these other two. Obviously, I think because of Chappelle Corby's case, everything like that is made him show some reluctance and no, I think that's obviously with Indonesia, sh the public of Indo Indonesia showing their support for that so he's obviously going to be winning over a mm. ma uh, majority of his country as Tony Abbott's trying to do here. Yeah. I, think, I think, do you have any more comments? I was just going to say in this case it's definitely all the governing authorities are ruling in favour of themselves. It is a domestic issue, not an international one. All right, I think that brings us to an end of international relations. Now we've got one more point for tonight which is the morality of capital punishment, a slightly more broader issue. And we're going to take a look once again at the opinions of the University of Wollongong students before we discuss this. When you go to Bali, if you've ever been, it says everywhere, if you bring drugs, you're going to get the death penalty. And people know that, everyone knows that. And I feel like, yes, these guys were so young when they committed this crime, but they still had the capacity to understand that a crime's a crime and the punishment is a death penalty. These people knew the consequences of what they were doing, they knew the laws around this country. It's 
expected that uh, they knew what they were getting into. Well, they shouldn't have done what they did, obviously, you know. Drugs are never good. They've changed heaps. Like, one of them's an artist now, and one of them's, like, helping kids and stuff. If the, Indone if the Indonesian government doesn't go through with it, then their capacity as a state and people following their laws is going to be undermined and they're just going to have like a lack of credibility. People are just going to walk all over them and think they can always get away with it. If you commit a crime and you know the consequence, you should be ready to suffer that consequence. I know they've like reformed and I think they were being, trying to be like big advocates for rehab and stuff for people in the jail. They seem like they've really changed in Bali, Balinese jail. So I don't know. I think it's Australia's problem to deal with, not necessarily Bali's. Like Indonesia's parliament to deal with, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Capital punishment is a very controversial issue, not only domestically but internationally with countries like America dealing with this. And Matt, I believe there's plenty of countries that still have capital punishment. Yeah, there's actually, I um, believe it's 57 or 58 countries that still have it legal. Um, and there's a list here somewhere, I'll just name a few. There's Afghanistan, Belarus, uh, Cuba, Egypt. Iran, Iraq, Japan, that's a bit of a, that was a shock to me to see, but there's still a lot of countries that still have it, and there's also, I think, 35 that have it sanctioned, so it's not really a law, but it's there, and it hasn't been, majority of them haven't used it in 10 or so years, so that's sort of in the middle of the two. So, um, Sally, I'll go to you. Do you think capital punishment is an archaic philosophy, or do you think it's something that could still be relevant in today's society? I definitely think capital punishment is totally outdated. I mean, we're in the 21st century now. We, you know, we, um, we've got, you know, government like, bodies such as the UN and stuff like that, that we, um, we promote so much, um, on, like, so much rights for humans as individuals and just as a collective and, you know, helping the international community and stuff like that. We've just come a long way from all these historical events um, to try and, you know, you know, get get the point across that humans have a right to live and that we shouldn't be taking one life, especially over something like drugs. I mean, drugs kill, you know, heaps of people. And, you know, you could say, oh, yeah, you know, they've done it to themselves. They've brought over the drugs knowing the risk and stuff like that. But I don't think that turning around and just sitting on the fence and saying, well, that's Indonesia's laws, you need to abide by it. I think Indonesia need to step up and they need to reform their laws because it's, it's totally wrong. So would you say there's no place in society for capital no, punishment? No, 100% no. There's no so, place. Jake, would you agree there's no place, no crime's bad enough for capital punishment? Yeah, I mean, it's very, like said, it's very, very outdated. I mean, you know, the, the whole thing, it's an eye for an eye. Um, you know, the fact that, you know, two wrongs don't make a right is another thing. Like, you know, we, the, you know, that yes, they did the crime and, and surely, you know, a life imprisonment is enough to, you know, deter them. And, and people do say, OK, the taxpayers have to pay for it. Um, but, you know, keep, keeping these people off the street, you know, without having to kill them is definitely a, enough rather than having to kill the person. So, Matt, when it comes to back a little, backtrack a little to international issues, is it fair to execute a person committing a crime from another country or do you think it's, if it's in, within the country, same rules apply? <laughs> this is a tricky one. It, I think if it's the country's law, there's not much we can do about it. That's their law and, uh, for example, Indonesia obviously haven't changed and don't know if they will ever change their law. I don't think it should be there, but it's hard to say if it's, uh, it's fair to execute anyone, not just from, if you're in another country, you're from another country in that country, like our situation, and, and it's not fair for that, but I also don't think it's fair for, say, an Indonesian to get executed in Indonesia. So on saying that, so perhaps maybe the way to progress forward would to not, like, state sovereignty as that concept, maybe we don't include capital punishment laws in that. So if you want to govern your own nation by a capital punishment law, that's fine, just don't place it on other nations. That could be a As way in don't you... impose it on people that yeah. come into your country and do something so wrong. So don't like... use the basis of state sovereignty as a way to justify that we're going to kill one of your citizens for committing an illegal yeah. act. I just think it's so much, it would probably just be so much easier to just um, not kill them and just get them deported back to Australia. Let us deal with them. Or don't commit the offence. Well, yeah, exactly yeah, what I, I mean. Yeah, it. I think, I think you know, for people that, you know, do commit the offence and are put in this situation, governments really do need to have a look at 
alternative situations and to just turn around and say, okay, we're going, you know, we're going to set a date and you're going to die that day. Like, mm. you know, we really need to have a look because these are, these are human lives. At the end of the day, we are all human. And I think everyone can relate or not everyone can relate, but everyone, it provokes such big emotion. If you were, to, if you were, when asked the question, what would you do if it was your brother, if it was your mom, if it was, you know, your father or yourself put in that situation, you would do absolutely anything to get them out mm. of there. So no matter what opinion you have, I think at the end of the day, we need to have um, a collective understanding that these are human lives that we're dealing with. They're not, they're, they're not just disposable as what the Indonesian government are trying to make out of. And that's where it comes back to the point where Indonesia needs to realise that, hey, like they, they, they're asking for clemency for their own people in other countries that have this death row. They're doing the exact same thing we are doing to them. So I, that's, I really just think that we need to, they need to reform their laws. And this law just should not be, it should not be part of any, of any, of any country anymore. Just picking up on the, the date thing, I mean, the fact that this has drawn out so much, I mean, you know, these guys have been basically mentally tortured. Yeah. You know, they, they don't know when, you know, it's been sometimes, the okay, yes, it's going to happen, then, you know, they're appealing. It's just, it's just drawn out. It's got to be hard for them. It's got to be terrible. It's, be, it's like they're in a game of some sort. Like, a, it's just, oh, it's horrible. So you don't think that a country's culture comes into account when it comes to something as severe as killing another person? I'll go to you, Ellie. Well, I think it's contradictory because the Indonesian, you know, society is one of the largest Muslim sectors in the world. And if you look at the religious interpretation of the Ten Commandments, it says, you know, one life is not more sacred than another. You do not take another's life. So if they are using this law as a basis to protect the people, but is, you know, taking the right to take someone's life a true representation of democracy, like perhaps they're needs to be a reinterpretation of religious principle in that fact like you cannot say you're a devout Muslim community if you're enacting these laws that obviously don't reflect that certain sector. And something else with there, especially with Indonesia, I mean obviously drug trafficking is something that they do look at with capital punishment but you know someone for, for murder can get 15 years. Mm. I mean so how does that you know justify so, the self, I mean the, basically you know murder is, is killing someone in itself. I mean the fact that you know drug trafficking is, is seen as, as worse than murder is definitely certainly an issue itself. If you look at some numbers, especially uh, a recent-ish poll in New Zealand showed that 45% did not oppose the death penalty. Do you think, what, what thought process do you think is going through people who aren't against capital punishment? Because considering it's not, even in our side of society, it's not 100% agreed upon issue. There's still at least 25, 30, sometimes even 40% of societies in Western society that think it's still acceptable. Um, I think a lot of people are just quite ignorant on the subject and they may just not want to even think about it. They're just like, oh, okay, well, I agree with it because I think they might look at the facts and be like, okay, they've, made a cr they've done a crime in a country, they knew the risks. So I'm just going to sit on the fence and be like, they deserve the capital punishment. I think a lot of people have taken that thought, mm. um, which fair enough. I mean, it, it, it is a fact. They did criminalise themselves. It, they knew the risks and stuff like that. But I think what we need to realise, it's a, it's a broader issue. It's not just turning around and saying, oh, I agree with them because they broke the law. You've got to really look at what we want for future generations to look at and open up their perspective on this. Um, topic that it is such an it's such a barbaric law and it needs to be outdated. Mm. So in saying that, oh, sorry, no, in okay. saying that, uh, you said forty five percent. I think of the public of New Zealand said that, yeah. but that's just like the everyday person, like I guess like us or anyone just walking around. But there's a statistic. I think it was eighty eight percent of criminologists who study crime. Or if we do this, it might stop people from doing crimes in the future, but the criminologists have come out and said, well, no, it's not effective at all in that way. We'd also like people at home to let us know their comments. We're using the hashtag on Twitter, the live issue. What do you think of capital punishment? Now I'll go to Jake. What's your thoughts of the impact of, of the Bali 9 executions on future generations keeping this execution and executing Australians? What type of, what will this do to the like eight year olds, ten year olds at home that's watching this on the news? Yeah, I mean it's definitely tough. I mean, you know, the fact that you know, this is out playing in the media, the landscape, and the fact that it has drawn out for so long. I mean, you know, there's going to be kids asking you know, what, why, you know, what's what what is bad enough to, to, to kill someone over. Um, I mean, we'd like to hope that you know this would stop drug trafficking, but in all realistic, it's it's not it's not going to stop it. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a tough issue that you know parents are going to have to deal with with, with children. 
for sure. And this is a point of the night where I'm going to ask for final comments and thoughts. So anything that you've got on your chest, let it go. Oh, I'm yeah. going to start with the person on my right, Ellie Minow. What do oh, you yeah. think? What's your final thoughts? Final thoughts are, no, I do not agree whatsoever with capital punishment. I think it, it's an extreme form of punishment. It does not obviously act as an effective deterrent for future offenders, though these men, like I said before, knowingly committed a crime, well aware of the consequences. And, you know, the Indonesian government does have that authority under state sovereignty to make these judgments. And honestly, it's absolutely shattering to think the fact that people will be killed for these crimes in saying that, you know, murderers are killed and stuff and rapists and people that actually commit atrocious crimes. And I'm not saying that drug trafficking isn't a bad crime. It obviously kills people and exposes to people to narcotics and psychotropic drugs that do have an effect. But I think that, you know, this is just the wrong way to go about it. And Matt, final thoughts. Do I agree with capital punishment? Not at all, but at this very current time in Indonesia's law, we are, don't really have any power to stop what they wish to do. I, I don't, similar to Ellie's thoughts, it's just the capital punishment should go, but as of this current time, we can't really do much about it. Thanks for that, Matt. Now, Sally, final thoughts? Unfortunately, I think that um, through the attitudes displayed by Indonesia, I do think these this ex execution will happen, which is... It's, it's horrible to say, but I think it, it's, it's a fact. Um, and I think that we, I just honestly hope that our generation and future generations and the fact that our generation at the moment, you know, as we get older, we're going to have... Um, there are people out there that are our age that are going to be presidents of these countries that have um, capital punishment. And I really, really hope that they look back at, the, at events like this and back through history and realise that... We learn our lessons or we learn a lot of stuff from people that are older than us. And if we don't want history to repeat itself, um, I definitely think that they need to have that in mind about alternative um, solutions other than capital punishment, such as rehabilitation. Because I'm telling you now, Trent, there are a lot of kids our age that are using these drugs that, th that um, the two men were trying to bring back into the country. And I hope that if these future presidents have one day you know, they've become president of their country and they've got capital punishment in their country and they look back at what they were doing as a child or what they, they, what they were doing as a teenager, realise that um, it, it's, it's, it's not a deterrent at all and it's barbaric and it's uncivilised and I think as a nation and, and as, you know, just a human being in general, the world needs to stop and reflect on what we can do to help people like this, not just, not just put them under the ground and forget about them. Oh, thanks, Ellie. Now, last but not least, Jake Bull, what's your th final thoughts? Yeah, I mean, picking up on that, well, you know, the future presence, but, you know, I guess we can consider ourselves as future journalists. So, I mean, what, what our way of, you know, changing people's views through, through our words and through our, our stories is definitely something that we can help change as well. I mean, cap capital punishment, no matter what way you look at it, is bad. Um, and, you know, countries are getting rid of it, but, you know, there's, there's still countries that like Indonesia that are going to keep doing it and we need to really push for, for that to stop and as soon as possible. And I mean, unfortunately, it may not be before these Australians, but if we can learn from that in the future, it definitely would be for the better. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that, Jake. Now, I'll end tonight with my final thoughts. Um, the people in tonight's panel made lots of great points, lots of good decisions. I think the majority of people watching tonight will probably agree that capital punishment is an incredibly harsh crime. And while it's impossible for us to stop or control what Indonesia is doing, we are stuck watching the media's portrayal of these events. Now, the media can, will, put, will rally the country together to defend these men, and these men do not, probably do not deserve the punishment they are going to receive. Now, you, any nation can decide the punishment of crimes within their country. Capital punishment, though, is a whole different level. These men could be given life, they could be given 20 years like the other seven Bali Nine members, but capital punishment is something that will need to be debated and discussed among society before and after the Bali Nine. Now I'd like to thank my panel for having a very engaging and riveting conversation. Riveting. First I'll start with thanking Ellie Minow. Thanks for joining us. Matt Gorskowski, Sally, 
Kalo Jit. Chitch, sorry about that, Sally, and Jake Bull. <laughs> Thank you for joining tonight. I hope the people at home enjoyed tonight, the very first live issue, and hopefully we'll be around again for, to, to talk about something new for you at home. Enjoy your night.